Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Village of Riverside Board of Trustees regular meeting of Thursday, June 20th, 2024. Uh, please join me. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk so please call the roll. President Pollock? Here. Trustee Evans? Here. Trustee Dialogos? Here. Trustee Marshazka? Here. Trustee Mateo? Here. Manager Francis? Here. Attorney Pickerel? Here. Also present, Clerk Soule. We have a quorum. Um, for the President's report, I have several announcements. Um, uh, first and foremost, perhaps, I am proud to announce that one of Riverside's own, Dana Retke, is set to play for USA Volleyball team in the 2024 Olympic Games in Paris. Well deserved. Uh, Dana grew up in Riverside and graduated from Riverside Brookfield High School in 2017. Uh, she will be one of 12 players on the U.S. women's national team during the Paris Summer Games. Uh, her volleyball career more than speaks for itself, uh, from being named the Illinois State High School Player of the Year in 2016, and earning the Big Ten Female Athlete of the Year in 2020 and 2022 with the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, on behalf of the Village, congr congratulations to Dana and her family, uh, and best of luck in, the, uh, in Paris. Uh, upcoming meetings at uh, Riverside Township Hall, 27 Riverside Road, include June 24th Historical Commission, uh, June 26th Planning and Zoning Commission, July 8th Riverside TV Commission, July 8th Sesquicentennial Planning Committee, uh, July 9th Landscape Advisory Commission, uh, July 11th Police Pension Board, and July 15th Historical Commission. Uh, please note that the Village Board will not meet at our normally scheduled first Thursday meeting, which happens to be July 4th. Uh, upcoming events, uh, Movie in the Park is being held at Big Paul Park on June 21st. Uh, Secretary of State Mobile uh, Drivers uh, Motor Vehicle uh, uh, Facility Tech mobile facility will be in Riverside on Wednesday, June 26, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Quincy Community Center. Registration is full for this event. We were uh, pretty much full within two or three days of announcement, which is exciting and shows what a great service this is uh, for our residents. Um, but due to this popularity, the village uh, did reach out to Secretary of State's office and secured a, secured a second mobile DMV event for December 4th uh, this year. Uh, but before we could announce the date, the wait list from 626 filled the second event's registration. So if you're not already registered, we'll try again next year. But uh, again, it's uh, extremely popular. and We were able to fill up two dates when we only had one. Uh, July 3rd, Concert in the Park. Of course, the big social event of Riverside every year is the July 3rd. Uh, concert in the park at Guthrie Park uh, uh, begins at 5.30 p.m. with the singing of the national anthem um, by Res Rev Riverside's own Jennifer and Madeline Pollock, uh, followed by DJ Maximus from 5.30 to 7 p.m. and from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. by the band Infinity. So again, everyone knows about the July 3rd concert in the park. If you don't know, it's a great event, a great opportunity to meet your, your neighbors and have, have a wonderful evening and celebrate uh, the anniversary of the United States. Um, then on July 4th, Independence Day, there's a 5K run at 7.15 a.m. The race will start at the Water Tower. Race day registration will be available. Uh, July 4th parade starts at 8.45 a.m. The parade route will travel from Big Ball Park to Guthrie Park. Uh, this year, the parade will feature a quiet zone for those with sensory challenges or sensitivity to loud sounds. That zone will be at the beginning of the parade at Big Ballpark. 
and also on July 4th, a uh, festival in the park uh, following the parade at 10 a.m. is being held in Guthrie Park. And um, on July 12th, uh, family bingo bash, Friday, 6.30 p.m. at Riverside Township Hall. And that concludes uh, my president's announcements. Manager Francis. Thank you. I just have one item to uh, provide an update on. Um, as some residents might have seen, Illinois Department of Transportation has posted different signage around the village about a scheduled detour related to the Forest Avenue bridge resurfacing. The village has also shared that information on our website. Um, Illinois Department of Transportation will work on the Forest Avenue bridge and that will begin on Monday, June 24th and is scheduled to be completed at, by August 10th. Um, many may not be aware of this, but the bridge is actually IDOT's jurisdiction and is owned and maintained by them. The sidewalks on the bridge will remain open to pedestrian and cyclists during construction and signage will be posted stating that the sidewalk is open. The village did make a request to keep the bridge open to limited traffic. However, due to the width of the bridge, that request could not be accommodated as it would be unsafe for those completing the work on the bridge. The village engineer will do periodic visits and report any issues to the site manager. Additionally, there will be additional traffic enforcement in the areas of the traffic detour. So I just wanted residents to be aware of that. Any periodic updates that we receive from IDOT, we will of course share via social media and also through our eFlash system. And finally, I just wanted to make note of a fabulous one sheet that was created of and this isn't a comprehensive list. This is truly just a snapshot of the work that has been done by the village board and village staff over the past 12 months. Um, and so what we'll be doing next year is we typically do a village by the numbers <laughs> in our um, Riverside Review, which is our newsletter that goes in the water bills. And next year, what we're going to do is actually dedicate the entire newsletter, not only to the accomplishments on one side, but you, we also do village by the numbers, which just educates residents on the volume of work and the different things that the village does throughout the year. That is all I have this evening. Thank you. Uh, resident comments for non-agenda items. Are there any residents in attendance who would like to address the board on non-agenda items? I see none, so we'll move on to the consent agenda. Clerk Soul, please uh, read the consent agenda. Approve voucher list of bills, June 20th, 2024. Approve Village Board of Trustees regular meeting minutes, June 6th, 2024. Review and file board and commission minutes, Economic Development Commission regular meeting, March 13th, 2024. Preservation Commission Special Meeting, May 9th, 2024. Ad hoc Sesquicentennial Planning Committee Regular Meeting, May 13th, 2024. Landscape Advisory Commission Regular Meeting, May 14th, 2024. Review and file department reports, community development, finance, police, fire police, public works, May 2024. A resolution authorizing the village manager to approve a change order in the amount not to exceed $85,000 for the purchase of additional water meters as part of the village-wide water meter replacement program and a resolution approving an independent contractor agreement between the Village of Riverside, Illinois and the Chicago Zoological Society for Police Department support at the Brookfield Zoo Chicago's Roaring Nights concert series. Thank you. Uh, do any of these items need to be removed from the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'd ask for a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee Gallego, second by Trustee Marsh Osga. Uh, Clerk So, please call the roll. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Gallego. Aye. Trustee Marsh Osga. Aye. Trustee Mateo. Aye. Uh, consent agenda is approved. There, there are no department, board, or commission reports this evening. Uh, move on to pending business. Motion to accept the Village of Riverside's annual comprehensive financial report for the fiscal year ended December 31st, 2000. 23, Finance Director Zavala. Good evening. Annually, the village is required by state statute to complete an audit of the financial statements. The village is currently in the second year of a three-year contract with Lauterbach and Amen. The audit report has been completed and included in the packet for your review. 
The Treasurer's report was published yesterday, June 19th in the Landmark, and the Controller's report will be submitted by the end of the week. Some highlights from the audit are the general fund ended the year with a surplus balance of $232,524. That is unassigned for future capital projects. There was a successful implementation of the new GASB 96 pronouncement regarding software subscriptions. The audit process is about six months long and with the new pronouncement is not an easy feat. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to the team of Lauterbach and Amen for their collaboration and timely completion of the audit. With that, I will hand it over to Jamie Wilkie, partner of audit services at Lauterbach and Amen. Thank you. Thank you, good evening, thank you for having us. Uh, I certainly wanna start my discussion this evening by thanking the staff. Um, she has been an absolute pleasure to work with uh, finishing up this year's audit, so thank you so much, Yvette, for all of your hard work. Uh, I have added about 170 pages to your board packet tonight, so I do apologize in advance. I promise not to go through all of those pages in detail, but I do wanna point out a few key sections within the document document that I always think are of interest to our boards. Uh, first of all, I want to start off with page seven of the report, um, and as I give page numbers this evening, it will be the actual page numbers on the bottom of the audit document itself, not the PDF page number, just to clarify. Uh, page seven provides a copy of the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. Um, so as Yvette indicated, state statute does require that each year you go through an independent audit, but that requirement is what we would call a basic audit. Uh, what the village does each year then is actually submit the audit to really the highest level reporting you can have, which is the Government Finance Officers Association Certificate of Achievement Award. So that creates a couple of extra, uh, what I would call transparency sections within the audit document, um, and I'll provide a couple page number references for those. Uh, page seven is a copy of the award for last year's audited financial statements. As part of all of the submissions that have to happen through the end of this month, we will be submitting this year's audit document to that program as well. Uh, and we obviously anticipate receipt of that award. Our firm has 100% retention rate of that award. So, uh, After the Certificate of Achievement on pages 10 through 12 of the audit document, you'll actually find our independent auditor's report. Um, there's really two goals each year when we come in to conduct the audit. Number one is to issue an opinion on the materiality of the financial statement. So that's really what an auditor is opining on each year as part of the engagement. Uh, so we have issued what we call an unmodified or clean audit opinion. Uh, that is the highest level we can issue to the village each year. And again, that indicates that the financial statements are materially correct. As part of the audit process, the second goal is really to look at the overall internal control environment of the village. Uh, so we are required to take a look at things like policies, procedures. Uh, we engage in third party confirmation of significant balances. We look to ensure that the staff has the appropriate supporting documentation, for example, for certain uh, balances and transactions. Uh, certainly through that detailed testing, if there were any areas of concern or red flags, we would unfortunately have to have that conversation tonight, but I'm happy to report we had no such findings. So uh, truly the cleanest opinion that you can receive each year. I do want to point out immediately after the audit opinion, a section labeled Management's Discussion and Analysis, or MDNA. You'll find this on pages 14 through 27 of the document. Uh, as I indicated, I think you've got 168 pages, um, and unfortunately, our government audits tend to keep growing each year. Uh, that is a lot of information to digest, especially from a board member perspective. So those 14 pages in the MDNA really do serve as the executive summary. I do encourage our boards to read that section in detail as you are able. Uh, it really does provide a nice synopsis of the key results for the year, as well as comparable 
comparables to the prior fiscal year. So you can get a flavor for how this year looked in comparison to last year as well. Um, as Yvette indicated, overall it was a positive year for the village. So when we talk about total equity or the total value of the village, uh, that did in fact go up in comparison to the prior year. And you'll see some of the detailed discussion around that on those 14 pages. Uh, the last section I want to point out starts on page 131 and will actually take you through the very last page of the document. I like pointing this out because I am well aware that most folks don't get that far into the audit, unfortunately. Um, but page 131 to 168 provides what we call the statistical section. I always like pointing this section out to our boards because there is really a wealth of information at the very back of your audit. Uh, financial results for the past 10 years, overall debt position for the last 10 years, things such as property taxes, operating indicators, number of full-time employees. So all of these schedules are part of the Certificate of Achievement Award and provided in that very last section of the document. I'm happy to kind of stop here and open it up for any questions or other commentary uh, that the board might have this evening. Trustee, any questions or comments? Seeing none, um, I'd like to thank you, and, thank you and our staff for, for our work. This is an important function of local government that uh, we do every year to make sure that, just to kind of double check and make sure that we're doing everything uh, properly. Um, let's see, do we need action on this item or just? We need a a motion. We need a motion. To, would someone like to make, I, I should ask the public, I see no one in the audience, so uh, I assume no public comment. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to approve the uh, uh, annual audit? So moved. I'll second. Motion by Trustee Mateo, second by Trustee Galagos. Uh, Clerk's Hill. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Galagos. Aye. Trustee Marshaska. Aye. Trustee Mateo. Aye. Motion is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is the Berkeley Road Traffic Update. Director Buckley. Uh, good evening, President Pollock, members of the board, and Manager Francis. Uh, thank you for allowing me a few minutes to talk about something we've been talking about for a while now, and that's Berkeley Road. Uh, back in June 15th of 2023, uh, the board instructed us to give quarterly updates regarding Berkeley Road as to some of our um, improvements and things that we were doing to try to minimize traffic and control speed on Berkeley Road. Uh, these updates have included traffic and speed counts uh, for vehicles traveling on Berkeley Road. And since the start of these updates, th we have made several improvements to that area, which include signage, increased police patrols and enforcement, um, especially when it comes to some of the parking violations. And in doing so, the progress that we've made in reducing the traffic flow on Berkeley has been pretty evident uh, with our recent studies that we've done there. Uh, our studies are we use our traffic counter, which gives us the number of vehicles that travel by the traffic counter, as well as the speed of those vehicles as they go by. Um, our latest traffic count, we, we did it from May 13th through May 22nd. Uh, there were a total of 1,164 cars that traveled on Berkeley. The average speed of these vehicles was 17 miles per hour. While doing that, the highest speed we found traveling down Berkeley was 32 miles per hour. Uh, that was uh, one vehicle. Uh, there were two vehicles that, um, I'm sorry, there were two vehicles that were at 32 miles per hour, one vehicle at 31 miles per hour. And as you look in the packet, it lists the other speeds also. But I think there were a total of 11 vehicles that traveled over 26 miles per hour which to me is a very low number. Um, I'd like to see everybody at 25 miles per hour doing the speed limit there, um, but those were a couple vehicles that did travel um, over the speed limit, which is 25 miles per hour on that street. Um, also during this time over the last year since we started all this, we've done a lot of sign improvements out there. We've put up stop signs uh, at the corner of Bird and Berkeley um, with a crosswalk that was installed there also. We've done uh, right, no right turn, or I'm sorry, right turn only signs at the dispensary curb cut 
uh, pushing traffic onto Berkeley, going towards Harlem. <clears throat> we moved the do not enter signs from Harlem Avenue down to the alley uh, at Berkeley. Um, this was done mostly because of the townhomes, allowing them access to come down Berkeley when they do uh, leave the townhomes. Uh, because this, the do not enter signs do state on there that it's for authorized vehicles only, which are authorized to residents that live in that area on Berkeley. Um, we put up signs that notified that the area is under surveillance. With uh, Starbuds being on the corner of their system that they have in and around their facility, uh, we're able to get access to that if need be. Uh, and we've done these quarterly traffic counts, which has, have shown that a lot of our improvements that we have done uh, have worked, and they have reduced the number of vehicles traveling on that street, and definitely has shown that it's reduced the number, the speed of vehicles traveling on that street. <clears throat> so at this time, it's a recommendation of village staff to conclude with these updates. Um, although this will still be an area that we are always keeping an eye on, uh, we do regular monitoring there, especially because of the uh, Starbuds business that's on that corner. Uh, we make routine passes through that parking lot, um, checking on the business, making sure everything's fine in that area. And also we're watching for vehicles that are traveling on Berkeley as well as all the streets in the area to make sure that they're abiding by our traffic laws. Thank you. Thank you, Director Buckley. Any questions for Matt? Um, any further direction from the board? Um, seeing none, I think, uh, thank you for monitoring this over the years. I'm sure if new information or new situations come up, we can revisit this, but um, that will conclude the quarterly reports that the board had asked for. So between myself, Manager Francis, Director Tab, uh, we spent a lot of time standing on Berkeley, a lot of times right at Harlem Avenue, just watching traffic, seeing coming up with different ideas of how we could approach this and different things we could do. Um, we are still gonna put up one sign at the end of the alley at Berkeley, pushing traffic <coughs> towards Harlem. Um, that's in the works right now. Uh, Director Tab is working on that. So as things come up and we find stuff like that, we can do something small that helps alleviate other issues. We're gonna uh, stay on top of that and do it also. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is an ordinance approving amended site plan related to fences and parking at 2710 South Harlem. Uh, Assistant Manager Monroe. Good evening. Uh, so this is a continuation of the, uh, of the item discussed by the Village Board at the June 6th Board meeting. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission had addressed uh, the request from 2710 South Harlem for removal of the fence is shown in part of their site plan that had been approved. Uh, the village board at the, at the last meeting had indicated a, uh, that staff should prepare an ordinance for approving a major amendment to the site plan for removal of the fence, and that is what is before you this evening. I'll note that there's one uh, revision to what's in your packet, and I will allow Attorney Prickroll to address that item. Thank you. Uh, if anybody looks on Exhibit D to the ordinance, it's a document titled Unconditional Agreement and Consent. Uh, this document should be somewhat uh, new for everybody. This is a document that our office often uses in conjunction with a zoning relief. It really does two things. It makes sure that the person who's receiving the zoning relief acknowledges that everything was done properly. And secondly, it requires that they indemnify the village in case there's a lawsuit in connection with the zoning relief. Seems like a big ask, but there's a, a logic behind it. And it's good for everybody because first off, um, it's good for the village because we get a financial assurance and protection that if we're sued, we'll, have, um, we'll be indemnified. It's also good for the uh, person receiving the zoning relief because the village has no obligation to defend these lawsuits. If we grant zoning relief and we are the proper defendant, and if somebody were to sue the village, uh, we could do nothing. And as a result, the zoning relief would be, they would just win by default. And so if the individual wants to defend that zoning relief, they, this grants them that opportunity. Um, and so this is something, first I just, I'm glad we brought it up because this is something I'll be in, uh, including in more you know, grants, special use permits, plan unit developments, things like that. Um, 
I actually spoke to uh, Dr. N uh, this afternoon about this, because this was someone new to him as well, and his position was, uh, well, if somebody sues, I don't want you defending it, and I'll, I won't defend it myself either, so I'd rather not have that at all. And in light of the fact that he would just not want a defense of it, um, uh, I said, well, why don't I rework this into something that will be mutually agreeable? And he found that to be acceptable. And so uh, if the board was inclined to uh, approve this ordinance tonight, I would suggest doing so subject to revisions to Exhibit D that are acceptable to both the village manager and the village attorney. Thank you. With that. So um, this was, we voted to basically direct staff to prepare this ordinance at the last meeting. It was a four to one vote. Uh, we have a different group of trustees, and I always, when that happens, I want to make sure that the outcome doesn't change in fairness to those who are not here uh, and were not at the last meeting. And I understand that that uh, from talking to trustees that um, that's, we, we should be okay. So um, I just wanted to clarify that. Um, so uh, any further, any questions uh, for uh, Assistant Manager Monroe or for the Attorney Pickerel? Um, seeing none, uh, would someone like, to, and there's no public to comment, um, would someone like to make a motion? I'll make that motion. Just to clarify. With the conditions? Motion. With the condition that I mentioned? Yes. With the condition mentioned, yes, thank you. A second. Yeah, motion by Trustee Galgo, second by Trustee Mateo. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? Uh, Clerk's home. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Galgos. Aye. Trustee Marshazga. Aye. Trustee Mateo. Aye. Motion's approved. Thank you. Um, new business. We have no new business. Um, trustee reports. Are there any trustee reports this evening? I have one. Trustee so Galgos. the beginning of summer is upon us, and that means getting back on the river. The eighth annual Riverside Regatta will take place on Sunday, June 30th. This is open to the public. It's free. So if you have a kayak or can borrow one, you can meet us there at Scus Grove in North Riverside at 10 o'clock in the morning, and we should be exiting the water at uh, um, Sony Ford in Lyons, and we'll have uh, refueling and uh, rehydration at one of our very own establishments at the Sand Trap afterwards. So this is an excellent event that the Lions Club and the American Legion jointly put on together, and we welcome the public to it. Thank you. So, Sunday, June 10th. 30th. June 30th, I mean. yes. yes. Sunday, June 30th. Thank you. Okay. I have one as well. Yeah. I just wanted to um, mention that I attended the Riverside Farmers Market on behalf of the village at the trustees table on Wednesday. Um, I had the opportunity to speak uh, in great detail to uh, more than a dozen different residents, each of whom had different you know, issues that they were interested in and, and, and exploring. So I really want to thank everybody for coming out and doing that um, and having a chance to, you know, communicate with your village board, which, you know, a lot of people don't know that they have that opportunity. But, um, you know, we will be uh, at the farmer's market at various points throughout the summer. Um, and some, some folks wanted to get involved with C4, which is um, inviting people to um, join us in the parade uh, this year with a you know, clean green uh, theme, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, we have a meeting this coming Saturday for people that are specifically interested in the parade, um, and then a uh, general C4 meeting Thursday of this coming week at the Riverside Public Library. It will be at 6.30 rather than our normal um, you know, 7 p.m. meeting time just because of the library's early hours this summer. Uh, we also had people who were interested in getting involved in the sesquicentennial committee as volunteers. We do have a public call going for people who are interested in helping us develop the programming for uh, 2025, which will be the village's 150th um, year or anniversary of the incorporation of the village. So lots to do and lots of ways that our residents can get involved. So just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other reports or from the trustees? Um, the board does have a need for an executive session this evening uh, to discuss the setting of a price 
for sale or lease of village property. Mm -hmm. uh, the board will not reconvene and no final action will take place. I would ask for a motion and second to adjourn to executive session. Motion is made. I'll second. <laughs> Motion by uh, Trustee Galgo, second by Trustee Marshaska. Uh, Clerk Soule, please call the roll. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Galgos. Aye. Trustee Marshaska. Aye. Trustee Mateo. Aye. Meetings adjourned.